Hello everyone, welcome to Pediatrics. Today I will talk about Krabi disease. Krabi disease is an inherited disorder that destroys the protective coating that is the myelin sheet of the nerve cells in the brain and throughout the nervous system. In most cases, signs and symptoms of the Krabi disease develop in babies before 6 months of age and the disease usually results in death by age 2. Now when it develops in older children and adults, the course of the disease can vary greatly. Now, Krabi disease affects about 1 in 100,000 people in the United States. It is also known as globoid cell leukodystrophy. Now, in most cases, the signs and symptoms of Krabi disease appear during the first 2-5 to five months of life. They begin gradually and progressively worsen. In infants, common signs and symptoms early in the course of the disease include feeding difficulties, unexplained crying, extreme irritability, fever with no signs of infection, decline in alertness, delay in typical developmental milestone, muscle spasm, loss of head control, and frequent vomiting. As the disease progresses, signs and symptoms become more severe. They may include seizures, loss of developmental abilities, progressive loss of hearing and sight, rigid constricted muscles, stiff fixed posture, progressive loss of ability to swallow and breathe. Now when Krabi disease develop later in the childhood or during adulthood, signs and symptoms can vary widely. They may include progressive loss of vision, difficulty walking which is known as ataxia, decline in thinking skills, loss of manual dexterity and muscle weakness. As a general rule, the younger the age the Krabi disease occurs, the faster the disease progresses and the more likely it is to result in death. Some people diagnosed during adolescence or adulthood may have less severe symptoms with muscle weakness as a primary condition. They may have no impairment of their thinking skills. Now the cause of Krabi disease. It is caused when a person inherits two copies of an alter that is mutated gene, one copy from each parent. A gene provides a kind of blueprint for producing proteins. If there is an error in this blueprint, then the protein product may not work properly. In case of Krabi disease, two mutated copies of a particular gene result in little or no production of an enzyme which is called galactoseriprositase. This enzyme is responsible for breaking down certain substances in cells recycling center which is called lysosome. In Krabi disease, the short supply of galactoseriprositase enzymes result in the accumulation of certain types of fats which are called galactolipids. Galactolipids normally exit in cells that produce and maintain the protective coating of the nerve cells which is called myelin. However, an abundance of galactolipid has a toxic effect. Some galactolipids trigger myelin forming cells to self-destruct. Other galactolipids are taken up by the specialized depris eating cells in the nervous system which are called microglia. Now the process of cleaning up excess galactolipids transform these normally helpful cells into abnormal toxic cells which are called globoid cells. This promote myelin damaging inflammation. Now the subsequent loss of myelin that is demyelination prevent the nerve cells from sending and receiving messages. Now the risk factors for Krabi disease. The gene mutation associated with the Krabi disease only causes the disease if two mutated copies of the genes are inherited. A disease resulting from two mutated copies is called an autosomal recessive disorder. If each parent has one mutated copy of the gene, the risk for a child would be as follows. A 25% chance of inheriting two mutated copies which would result in the disease. A 50% chance of inheriting only one mutated copy which would result in a child being a carrier of the mutation but would not result in the disease itself and a 25% chance of inheriting two normal copies of the gene. Now the complications. A number of complications including infections and respiratory difficulties can develop in children with advanced Krabi disease. In the later stages of the disease, children become incapacitated, are confined to their beds and eventually lapse into a vegetative state. Most children who develop Krabi disease in infancy die before the age of 2, most often from respiratory failure or complications of immobility and marked decrease in the muscle tone. 
Now, children who develop the disease later in the childhood may have a somewhat longer life expectancy, usually between 2 and 7 years after the diagnosis. Now, the diagnosis. Your doctor will conduct a general physical examination and assess the signs and symptoms that may indicate a neurological disease. A diagnosis of Krabby disease is based on a series of tests which may include the following. First, the laboratory test. A blood sample will be sent to a laboratory to assess the level of galactoserebrosidase enzyme activity. Very low or no enzyme activity level may indicate Krabby disease. Although the results help a doctor make a diagnosis, they don't provide evidence of how quickly the disease may progress. For example, very low activity of the enzyme doesn't always mean that the condition will advance rapidly. Next are the imaging tests. Your doctor may order one or more imaging tests that can detect the loss of myelin that is demyelination in affected regions of the brain. This may include magnetic resonance imaging that is MRI. It is a technology that uses radio waves and a magnetic field to produce a detailed 3D image. Next is the computerized tomography that is CT scan. It is a specialized X-ray technology that produces 2D image. Another test is nerve conduction study. It assesses the rate at which nerves conduct a signal, essentially how quickly they can send a message. A special device measures the time it takes an electrical impulse to travel from one point on the body to another. When myelin is impaired, nerve conduction is slower. Next is eye examination. This examination looks for the signs of damage to the optic nerve. Then is genetic testing. A genetic test may be done with a blood sample to confirm a diagnosis. There are variant forms of the mutated gene that result in Krabby disease. The particular type of mutation may provide some clues regarding the expected course of the disease. Now the newborn screening. In some states, a screening test for the Krabby disease is part of a standard set of assessment for the newborns. The initial screening test measures the galactoserebrosidase enzyme activity and if the enzyme activity is found to be low, then follow-up enzyme test and genetic test are conducted. Now the treatment. For infants who have already developed symptoms of Krabby disease, there is currently no treatment that can change the course of the disease. Treatment therefore focuses on managing the symptoms and providing supportive care. Intervention may include medication for irritability and pain such as gabapentin, anticonvulsant medication to manage seizures, drugs to ease muscle spasticity such as baclofen, physical therapy to minimize deterioration of the muscle tone, Nutritional support such as the use of a tube to deliver fluid and nutrients directly into the stomach. This is known as gastric tube feeding. Then intervention for older children or adults with less severe form of the disease may include physical therapy to minimize deterioration of the muscle tone and occupational therapy to achieve as much independence as possible with daily activities. Now stem cell transplantation. Hematopoietic stem cells are specialized cells that can develop into all of the different types of blood cells in the body. These stem cells are also the source of microglia, which are the specialized debris eating cells that take up residence in the nervous system. Now, in stem cell transplantation, donor stem cells are delivered into the recipient bloodstream through a tube which is called central venous catheter. The donor stem cells help the body produce healthy microglia that can populate the nervous system and deliver the functioning galactoserebrosidase enzyme. This treatment may help restore some degree of normal myelin production and maintenance. This therapy may improve outcome in infants if treatment begins before the onset of the symptoms, that is when a diagnosis results from a newborn screening test. Current evidence suggests that stem cell transplantation is most effective when started before an infant reaches 2 weeks of age. Now, studies have found that pre-symptomatic children treated with stem cell transplantation may have slower disease progression and improved quality and length of life compared with the children who don't receive stem cell transplantation before the symptoms develop. However, infants who have stem cell transplant before symptoms appear still develop significant difficulty with speech, walking, and other motor skills during childhood. Older children and adults with mild symptoms of Krabby disease also may benefit from this treatment. As with infants, the severity of symptoms at the time of stem cell transplantation affect the treatment outcome. 
Now children with Krabi disease often have more breathing problems later in the disease and require home oxygen or other intervention. Medical equipment or bracing may help maintain movement of the joints and help with the transportation and care of the child at home. It is helpful for caregiver to have the additional support of friends or family members when caring for this child. Now the gene therapy. Research on gene therapy for Krabi disease is ongoing. Gene therapy for Krabi disease would replace abnormal galactosidrosidase enzyme gene copies for the normal copies. This type of treatment is not available yet. Okay friends, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative health videos.